Hello, welcome to The Journey. Today's interview is with Daniel Rosa. He is our youth minister, and he's also a confirmation coordinator. So if you have a teen in the church, then you probably have already met Daniel, and if not, you'll want to meet him. So we're about to talk with his journey. Thanks for being here, Hi, Daniel. Kathy. It's so nice to have you here because our teens are so important here. Yes. I'm wondering how you made a choice to go into this as a career field. You know, I wanted to just start with that and see what happens from there. Well, I've been telling people is it's more my height, so it's easier for me to communicate with teens. <laughs> than you can look students. them eye to eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I got started with college ministry and um, just some great communication with with Saint Joseph here. And before I knew it, I was I was packing up, moving from Texas here. So. Well, that's a pretty big pack-up job. People <laughs> don't leave Texas often, no, so no. we must be special here. Yeah. Well, let me ask you: Did you have a great college ministry experience as as a you know as one of the teens or a youth ministry experience? Yeah. So, I loved my time at Southern Methodist University. When I showed up, um, the the campus ministry itself was starting to boom. We had a really active chaplain, um, a really dynamic staff at the ministry building. And then focus was there as well. Um, they had four missionaries, and so when I came to college, like I was just kind of swept up in all this. And my sister got me the job at the campus ministry building. I was the intern that uh, vacuumed, did dishes, I did the coffee, and then on campus I was putting out steak signs and all that. And I was just the yes man. I said yes to everything they asked me to do. We got to remember that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say no a lot. That. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, so you loved it yourself. And yeah. so being a part of it, I'm assuming that you started a relationship with Jesus before that? Or how did you and Jesus first meet? That is a great question. I would say it really happened. I actually gave this at our youth night talk uh, this past Sunday. It was an adoration experience in October of my freshman year of college. I was cradle Catholic. My parents reconverted to the faith right before they had kids. And so we were swept in their excitement for the faith, which was really That's awesome. wonderful. Yeah. I mean, we did, we were homeschooled, private and public schooled at different times. So we did a little Baltimore catechism. I had a little, you know, I, I got confirmed when I was eight years old. You know, I, we did pro-life things when I was in middle school. I did singing in the choir in high school. So I did all the things and had a, head, a lot of head knowledge, but it was an experience in adoration in college my freshman year that just like... Oh my gosh, that's Jesus, like looking at the Eucharist and then really fired up with my faith after the mission trip before my sophomore year of college. To? Peru. Peru. Now, what was so special about that time? Was it a week, a two week, or a summer? Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks, but it wasn't necessarily just the mission trip. It was also my mom was battling cancer at that time. Oh. And she had gone on this really beautiful pilgrimage to France to go to Our Lady of Lord and see all the holy sites of France. Wow. And so when she went to France, uh, I went to Peru, and both of our hearts were really transformed at that time. And my mother's love really transformed my heart. Wow, that's that's breathtaking. I I can hardly even think of my next question. But you know, how did you or were you able to get together with each other after and share about that? that was she's the reason she's the reason um i really i was such a hard-hearted do it like a man type of thing and I, I really adopted that um just because i just wanted to bear it through my life just her illness her battling cancer um but in the middle of the mission trip um it was a day when we were supposed to go to the chapel and I was really frustrated. I was really ticked off by a lot of things. I was misplacing things I was saying that were just off. I showed up late to the chapel and I sat cross armed, feet on the kneeler and just stared at the Eucharist and be like, I don't want to be here. And it's the first time I honestly started hating the faith, just really. Mm. And um, Helsia, one of the missionaries was playing a song from Matt Marr called um, Letting Go. And in the in the chorus it's i'm holding on to your love and i'm letting go of myself and after uh, i broke down and i'll fast forward to um there was after lunch i literally ran out of the lunchroom just thinking about how much i missed her for the first time i let myself feel love and it really felt like jesus threw a spear at my heart and just shattered it 
And my buddy Michael, who was a missionary, invited me. He patted me on the shoulder and he says, um, what, what, what are you thinking? And I said, why did I have to come thousands of miles just to feel God's love? Mm. And I did go home. after I stayed at the trip and I came home and it was a miracle she made it back to. She almost died in Lord France. She made it back to San Antonio and I had two and a half weeks with her. And it was the first time I'd ever chosen to go to Mass on my own. And I brought her communion every day, um, helped her get to confession, um, got to coordinate all her friends to say goodbye to her. Um, it was oh. one of the best, it was the best gifts I could give my mom before she said goodbye. Yeah. Wow. So you were so pulled, I imagine, at that point between the loss of your mother, but the excitement about Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that must have been quite a... a an experience. I mean, what, what, how did you proceed from there? Yeah. Um, the friendships, the friendships, the, the, the team I was with, and I'm really blessed to be here in Maryland because the chaplain of that trip is a parish priest in, in Baltimore. And then one of my closest friends from the trip, she lives in, 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 um, uh, close to UMD. And, um, they, the whole team just loved on me. And then it wasn't about me though, um, like like they saw my hurt, hmm. and they saw my mom in that. And for when I came back to the states, um, and I got to be with my family, like those relationships didn't end. And when I went back to college, like the whole community at SMU just really rallied around me and my sister because my sister was at the university as well. And that's how we got through. Because after something traumatic, you either go deep in the pits or you raise high excuse me to to the lord and if my friends weren't there and my sister wasn't there um oh, it'd be saying a different story so in in your experience you've you've received love from from jesus in such a big and deep way so imagine then that just grew from there your college experience was positive and powerful yeah and so when you're working with teens now how do you try to express the depth of that how can you try to get that across i, I mean yeah. without going through that i can't imagine trying to communicate <laughs> you're right um it's almost impossible to really communicate that especially when you just meet someone um, actually at the last university I was at, it wasn't until the week before I left that I realized that I hadn't told them my full testimony. I usually don't share it as often as I used to, um, because it, it, it does hurt. I do miss. <laughs> and I just forced you to do it on camera. No, it's okay. It's cause it's, it's the story that God has allowed me to share with others. Um, cause it's an invitation to others as well, you know? Um, and this is the right setting. You know, this is the right setting. Um, I, when I look at our teens and when I approach any team, because even at the March for Life, I was bumping into teens from Nashville, teens from North Dakota and stuff. I just, they're the object. Then they're, they're all I care about. Like, I, I'll share my story if it comes up, but most of the time it won't because their story isn't heard. Someone mm. took time for my story and I just want to give time for theirs. And they will go through life they will have pains one of the things that i always amazes me in, in life teen is like you'll bring up you know when life gets hard and the whole room goes like because they get it in their own way they get yeah. it um so you know i don't need to talk about this hurt unless it's the right time and when it is you know i you know i'm not going to ask them to be that comforting hand and words that my friends were to me sure. god gave me those gifts and they can be who they are so so as I, you know, hear that, you're just basically being yourself and, you know, asking people to tell their story as it's appropriate, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Well, I've seen you around and, you know, you are such a joy to watch. I mean, <laughs> e even with me, I mean, you, you've got that joy of Jesus right in there. Thank you. And so I, it, it just seems like you're the, you're the perfect person <laughs> to share. But I imagine it's also difficult 
you know, um, because you probably meet a variety of teens, um, some that don't want to be there. I don't know. Are, are they, some of them, forced to come to, <laughs> to this time? I would imagine so. I, whenever I look at our teens, I forget, like, I was in high school, too, and I think about my Catholic school class, and we had the whole gambit. I mean, you had those of us that, like, really wanted to be there, and those that are just like, yeah, I'm here because I'm here, and those just, like, they would be back-talking everyone at the... And no matter where they're at, just, like, I, I want you there. I want you there. Until the point where, like, being here is actually, it's not helping you. It's not helping us in due time. And I will pray for you. I mean, if I come across someone, like, they go in my heart and my mind. And I know Pedro and Father Armando and Father John, like, we're all, we, we concern ourselves with these students. We really do. Um, so as, as they come, come as they are. Uh, I haven't met a lot yet. We have confirmation retreat coming up, and then we have confirmation class coming up after Super Bowl. Youth groups just getting started again, so still slowly meeting everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they're not gonna miss the joy and the, <laughs> and the love that you have in there. So you know, when you're um, looking at your faith, you you know you're not a very old person, so you don't have a whole long journey to talk about. But you know, I am curious. You know, about your siblings, are they? experiencing some of the same things you are being brought up by you know by catholics that were on fire I yeah mean. my brother is he is really a, a model for me and that whenever you know especially at the loss of my mom and as life gets hard like he came back to the family so like, he reminds me to go back to the family when i need to my sister she's married in, in dallas um with her awesome husband michael and marisa and I went to college together. We've done, my sister and I almost have done everything in life together. So she really understands that part. And then I stayed at her house when I had my internship and I'd stay at this place and blah, blah, blah. And she always was an older sister, but she was also just like the person who'd laugh at all my dad jokes when I needed them. <laughs> so yeah, they've both been awesome to me. So that's how many kids in the family? There's three of us. Three. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so um, your h hopes in youth ministry, would you describe any specific hopes that you have or things that you might want to do programmatically or anything otherwise? I mean, I hear you. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> can you say your top two or top favorite one? Yeah. Uh, really? I want everyone who comes through the program to have an opportunity to grow closer to Christ. I can't, I can't promise anyone you will grow closer to Christ, but I can say if you walk through the doors of any of the programming that we have, I will promise you, you will have a chance to knock on the door and say, can I get to know him a little bit more? And that might be through the truth of our teaching of the church, through scripture, through a prayerful experience. Could be through the goodness of our core team members, our confirmation leaders, our parents. Could be through the goodness of a friend that's there. It could be through just like the beauty of being around an awesome community. Mm -hmm. That is where they can encounter Christ. Yeah. So it sounds like you've got your fingers sort of spread out for them to come in any other way, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that's great. Now, I am curious about um, something else, and I don't want to embarrass you, but I know that you are um, uh, a Scola singer. Yes. And so how did that factor into your life and, and your faith? Yeah. Um, I was in eighth grade. I had gone back to Catholic school, and uh, my music teacher, Mr. Murray, he asked the whole eighth grade boys choir, he's like, well, you know, Lent's starting up around, actually around this time, this time 10 years ago. And he, he says, we need help with our 6 p.m. Latin mass and uh, was new back to the old school and back to the parish. And I asked my brother and him and I went to go sing. Um, and it went well the first weekend. We were learning how to read it and stuff like that. Um, but the cool part is you got to wear the black cassock and the white uh, um, surplus and then the next week, Mr. Murray was out. Mrs. Murray was there, and it was me and my brother. <laughs> and so That's it? That was it. So Mrs. Murray sang an octave lower than usual. Even my brother and I tried to sing up so we can match her pitch. And I, I mean, sweaty palms, like sweat dripping down. We were trying to fill this whole church that fits about 500 people. I think only about like 150, 200 people came to that mass. But after that, that, that amount of nerves and that... 
I just, I kept on going every Sunday. And so for the next four and a half years, I went to almost every Sunday Latin Mass and helped at Holy Week. And at school, I learned to conduct and it ended up becoming my love language music did, uh, especially junior year high school. So. That's so unusual for a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, especially an eighth grade boy. I mean, that just blows my mind. Now, did you know Latin before that? Um, or is that how you well my family we used to alter serve at the latin mass so i could repeat those up. yeah i could repeat the responses but i didn't start studying latin until i went to that school in high school and i do latin as one of the languages as the language um so that's that whole kind of got me so when i look at text now i can kind of get the gist but no, i don't speak latin <laughs> yeah i don't know if anybody speaks it but <laughs> It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I loved hearing you when you did that at a, um, a wedding mass not long ago. So you are a man of many talents. Thank you. I, I'm so excited <laughs> that you're here, and I think everybody else is. Is there anything that you would like people to know, uh, anything else about your role here, your your hopes, your journey? Um, well, Final I word. <laughs> I know. Um, this is really silly, but Father John said at Mass, I'd give, I gave my announcement at Mass and introduced myself. Um, if you have a favorite restaurant or any food like I should try, please let me know because I'm, I'm a big foodie. Um, not like an Instagram foodie. I actually just eat the food. I don't try to like gram it or anything. So if you have any recommendations, I'd love to cook it. I'd love to try it. Or maybe we can have like a competition, see who can... Who can well, uh, who knows? Father Leo, here we come. Do you know about Father no. Leo? No. Is he the chicken? Uh, he's the guy that beat Bobby Flay. No, no, I don't do that. No. <laughs> no, no, no. So we won't have that, but no. <laughs> the pitch is out there, so anybody that wants to respond, that would be wonderful. So, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch with interest what you're doing and how the teens are going to start looking joyful just like you are. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> And we have a break coming up um, during Lent. Uh, the Lenten series is going to be called Exploring the Treasures Within, and we hope you participate. So till later in our next interview, see you.